18 years in the NHL. Now he's known mostly around the hockey world as Brady and Matthew's dad. And we are so happy to have Walt joining us here right now. Uh, congratulations on the recent news that you're going into the Blues Hall of Fame. What did it mean to you to find out that you were going into that Hall of Fame, but also have it come from your sons? Yeah, I knew something was up. We actually played golf that day and, uh, you know, I was trying to stick around the course for a little bit, but the wife came up and wheeled me out of there. So I knew something was going on. Then she told me the boys had something to tell me. And my first reaction was I thought it was going to be, you know, Brady and his newly wife, uh, Emma, were going to have a baby. But they told me <laughs> it was, uh, they were, told me about the St. Louis Blues, uh, you know, Hall of Fame. So it was, it was pretty special to be able to do it, uh, to hear it from them. And, and then obviously, you know, the icing on the cake was Pavel Dimitra were going in together. So it was pretty cool. And Mike Caruso, who's been a friend of mine for a long time, set that all up with uh, the boys. And uh, really, it was really nice hearing it from them. It was really pretty special. Hey, yeah, well, Keith, uh, can you talk about that that team that you had in St. Louis there? I mean, you played on a, a couple special teams. But I, I remember, and you're talking early 2000s, I mean, the St. Louis Blues were – that was a tough out, uh, I think, for a lot of a lot of teams in this league. How special and tight knit group was that? And you mentioned Pavel Dimitri and how special he was as a teammate. Yeah, when I first got traded there, we we obviously got knocked out in the conference finals. But to go into a group like that with Al McCain, that's just stronger. You know, Dally Drake's a great friend of mine, and I had a played on a great line with you know Scott Mooney and Pavel Dimitri. It was so much fun. Things were clicking. A great group of guys. Great place to live and. You know, it was a fun few years uh, playing together. We had, you know, a bunch of special players, and um, obviously things changed over the last, you know, you know, years after that. But uh, it was a great group, and we had Joel Quinville as a coach, Larry Plo as a manager, and obviously the Lorries with great ownership. And uh, it was a lot of fun playing with those guys. But it was really fun, and special playing with, you know, Pav and Mel. Uh, Mel and I used to fight in, uh, for space in front of the net because I was never used to one of my own teammates coming in and helping out in that area. So. We used to cross check each other, but it was uh, it was a good group. We had a lot of success and uh, great guys to be be around, not just playing with, but in the locker room. Speaking speaking of cross checking your own teammates here, I, I want to take you back to a time, Keith, 06 Torino. Uh, we happened to be playing on that Olympics together. Now I was a power play specialist on that team and a power play specialist only, so I got to play on that power play. We happen to have a five on three, so I get excited. I get to go on the ice, and Lavia lets the coach Perry go out there, get into your office in front of the net. I go out in front of that net, hang out there for I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, and I feel this lumber on my leg that I was not expecting from a kid from Kazakhstan to get me with, and I turn to my left. And it's you. And, and you <laughs> get out of here, kid, with a slash. I, I looked right at you. And I went right over to your spot on that five on three on my uh, one timer as a righty. Uh, and, uh, and sat there and watched you and Madonna just looking at me, going, What are you doing there, kid? And made sure he just fed it right into you there in front, Walt. It was, it was, it was amazing to, to get a chance to play with you and see that kind of intensity that you had and that love for scoring goals, because I had that as well. Well, it was a lot of love for my teammates too. It was a little love tap, but you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just love going to the net. I mean, you got to pay a price to go to the net and, you know, but the puck usually en ends up there. So I used to tell all the kids in youth hockey when I was coaching, get to the net, but you know, it's a, it's a place, you know, where you feel comfortable with and, you know, it's a lot safer playing in the front of the net in the Olympics than it would be playing in the NHL against guys like Prongs and Adam Foot and Hatcher. Those guys should be in jail for what they used to do to me. <laughs> sure. I agree. Well, you you have been known agree. to cross check a guy or two. I mean, so, not not cross check. I was I got I got kind of two here. I was raised. You were you were one of the first one of my earlier games that I played in the NHL. Uh, we were in St. Louis, and I remember you're standing in front of the net where you always are. And I was always taught by my dad that if someone's going to stand in front of that, you slash him, you push him, you get him out of the way, you do whatever you can <laughs> to get him out of there and see the puck. And I remember you were standing in front of me, and I whacked you and went to push you, and nothing happened. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, like, it was like pushing into a brick wall, and then I think shortly after you scored a deflection on me or, or somewhere. It might not have been this exact play, but it was... A, <laughs> <laughs> Very much like this scenario, except Ryan Whitney in this situation could not move you anywhere except for him backwards into me. But uh, <laughs> obviously, great spot to be there. And then I, I was kind of thinking as we were talking here, 
uh, with the kids because I, I love watching them play. You know, they always – I didn't get to play Brady much. I played Matthew Moore when he was in Calgary. But they're, they're always in that same spot in front of the net. They play hard. They go to those hard areas. They do it the right way. Is that something that you hammered into them? I'm sure you did a little bit. Is it a little bit of them just watching you play? Or did you hammer it into them? Or, or what, what kind of combination was that of those things? Well, first of all, seeing that video clip, it brings back great, great, uh, great memories. That was my last goal, I believe, in the wow, NHL. Really? Yes. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Amazing. <laughs> wow. And it was your birthday. Yeah, it was a double deflection, and I remember that. So I think that was my last goal, Duber. So nice. No thank way. You. Oh, that's that. awesome. Yeah, and and, and right. your point with the kids too is, you know what? When you go through those teams, especially when you get to a, a level where you're like the U.S. Uh, National Team Development Program. All these kids are skilled. They're all good players. They all want to be on the on the, the half wall or whatever. And I just told my kids, you know, everybody's going to be there. There's not a lot of guys that want to go to the net. So just tell them you want to play net front. And you'll probably get more right <laughs> time because it because of it. And you probably get rewarded more because of it. So uh, I think it was just watching and me tell me telling the kids. I mean, obviously I wasn't as skilled as the boys are with their hands, but eventually the puck is going to be around the net. So why not be there to get the uh, you know, the hard, easy goals, I call them. So, I mean, um, but they're willing to do it. It's a fun place to be. And it's, uh, you know, it wasn't fun getting some of the cross checks from the goalies and the stick, <laughs> which weren't very much fun. So, but uh, that's funny, that last goal. Wow. Dude, that's cool. awesome. I do didn't you know still that. have that's the great. puck from that goal? Did they say it for no you? Idea. I have no idea. You've got a I bucket full of pucks. Got 500, got 500, 500 some, some of them, so I think <laughs> it yeah. through that bucket. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, you know, we're all parents here, and so we all, you know, can gush about our kids, but you get to gush about two boys that play in the NHL and not only play, but thrive in the NHL. How would you describe what that's like for you now on this side of things, being a parent, watching your boys out there each and every night competing with the best in the business? Well, Jamie, I'm off their bandwagon right now. I'm on my daughter's bandwagon. Yes. <laughs> She's rolling down at UVA right I now. I love it. Field hockey, cool, right? Yeah, cool offensive player of the week in the AC. Nice. So I'm on her bandwagon. The other boys are uh, are uh, snake bitten right now. But no, uh, it's, it's fun <laughs> watching. Yeah, there it is. It's fun watching all my children. And, uh, you know, um, you know, I, I haven't gotten a chance to have seen them in person this year, but you know, we talk every day, and uh, Matthew and Brady have both handled themselves really well, and that's what I'm more proud of, what they do as teammates, and obviously Brady's a leader up in Ottawa, and they're a good young team. They're going to make some serious waves this year, there's no doubt about it, and the run Matthew had on with Florida was so exciting, and, you know, they both handle themselves well. They're pros. They put a lot of work into it. Uh, they're great teammates. They treat staff really well. They treat the people around the rink really well, and that's more important to me than what they do on the ice. Yeah, you just mentioned the, the we, we had Matthew on, well, we had Brady on too in the last probably week and a half. And uh, we asked Brady about uh, what he saw and experienced during the finals last year with Matthew's injury. We know that the family has great support, like you mentioned, for your daughter, um, for both your sons. He, he kind of took us through helping Matthew out of bed before the one game. And um, can you touch on that too? Like, I mean, it's tough. You played the game tough. You know the game is tough. And these kids all of your kids uh, seem to be, they got that that tough gene in them. But it's got to be difficult to see what Matthew was going through during the finals. Yeah, you're looking back, I mean, terrible parents. He probably should, shouldn't have played, but, you know, he wanted to play and it was important to him and it was important to his teammates. And I was too busy at the elbow room, so I couldn't go upstairs and pick him up. So, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but Brady, Brady was there for him and he did call Brady to probably come upstairs and, um, get him up and help him get dressed and, and probably shouldn't have let him drive to the rink that was another bad earning move so um but he was willing to do whatever it takes to play and i give him a lot of credit for doing that and you know the sacrifice you guys know how hard it is and um it's a long year and to be able to do that and there was no way he could play you know i saw you on the plane the next day proper and you know it was i mean i had to tell you it was it was he was in rough shape i mean but I give him credit and, you know, he tried to play through it. Unfortunately, they came up short, but, you know, hopefully he gets another crack at it.
We talked earlier, you spoke earlier about your kids and, and, how, and how your style of hockey has kind of inspired, I would say, them. or They pattern their game after you. Uh, when I was younger, I patterned myself after Dino Cicerelli. And then, of course, my last year in Seattle before I made it to the NHL, uh, I was asked, who do you pattern your style of play after? And, of course, I wrote down Keith Kachuk. <laughs> and I like that giggle because as soon as I got to the NHL, I realized I played nothing like Keith Kachuk. It is very <laughs> unique. It is one tough, hard-nosed hockey in front of the net. Who inspired you for your style? Who are your fan? Who are the, who are the guys you were watching to inspire well, your style of hockey? Well, I, was, I was a diehard Boston Bruin fan. I grew up right in Boston, and uh, I love the Bruins. And you know, guys like Keith Crowder, Ray Bork, Cam, Cam Neely was the guy. As I was getting older. And you know, as a teenager, just to see him play, and I wanted to be like him. This guy could do it all. He could play physical. He could scrap when he had to. He could score goals, um, and just was the ultimate competitor. And I think at the other day, guys like that is that's you know they're unique players, and they're, they'll probably have a you know a place in anywhere in the lineup. Um, you know, I didn't know at the time I was going to score more than I did, but whatever. It's, it's I just wanted to play and compete, and that's what I tell my kids every day. All three of them. I mean, no matter what happens, just compete and be a good teammate, and you know that's all you can ask for. But I was a diehard Bruin fan. Why wouldn't you be back in the day? Because they were the big bad Bruins, and they were you know not only good but they were physical. And um, this dating back to when I was really young, watching you know Terry O'Reilly and Stan Jonathan, guys like that. And now here you are about to go into the St. Louis Blues Hall of Fame. St. Louis, I'm sure, will always be very special to you. I know your sons, you know, called that home growing up, and they have a special tie to the community, even though they play in different NHL cities now. Uh, when you reflect on, on your playing days there and now seeing how far hockey has come um, and how many St. Louis kids are getting drafted into the NHL, I mean, how would you describe the growth of the game there? It's incredible. I mean, you can start with – you know, the days of Brett Hull getting things going and, and the excitement and, you know, with players wanting to play hockey, more and more rinks are being built. And obviously, as you as you keep going, guys like McKinnis Pronger, and then you get into, you know, the Stanley Cup 2019 team, there's been a lot of excitement here. And you have a lot of alumni that stick around and, and coach teams and be a part of the, you know, the youth hockey at every level, both men and women. So I think it's great. We're producing a lot of players. I mean, you know, is a little bit different and something you'll probably never see again with that many first round picks, but we're producing guys into, you know, the U you know United States Hockey League, the National Team Development Program, women playing college Olympics, guys playing in, 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 you know, ability to play college hockey, and then some are getting a chance to be drafted and play in the NHL, and it's great to see, uh, but as long as you're you know, you can, if you can impact one or two kids being a part of that program, I think it's great. And you're going to see more and more kids keep coming out of St. Louis and, and different markets uh, throughout the league, you know, Vegas, Texas, and Florida, and all places like that, Nashville. And it's great for hockey. And I think it uh, shows, the, you know, the commitment of the alumni of help, helping out over the past, you know, past 30 years. Hey, Walt, I got one last one for you real quick. Uh, you mentioned Al McGinnis and um, that shot. Uh, I never was, you know, got to experience that shot, probably thankfully uh, as an opposing player. But I, I, how do you think it would translate? Like nowadays, you got so many players that can shoot the puck hard. They got these special sticks that are, you know, they cost a fortune. You know this. Um, do you think, you think Al would benefit from the new sticks nowadays or can he shoot it because it was like a big piece of lumber and can you take us inside what that shot looked like on the day-to-day -day? well you know what the thing about al you hear about al until you play with him you know he's got a hard shot it hurts why would you stand in front of that there's nobody that had more control over that shot than al did um he was you know he knew where your stick was i never flinched at times you wanted to but he was in control with it and i couldn't imagine what how fat how hard he would shoot nowadays with you know the sticks are, it'd be insane. I don't know what the miles per hour would be, but it'd be scary. And I mean, he's broken, you know, goalies fingers. I mean, I think he did that to a couple goalies over the course of his career, but he had a tremendous shot. He can score from anywhere. Uh, great guy, great leader, but I felt very comfortable with him shooting where a lot of guys nowadays uh, would not feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much for the time and reflecting on what was a storied career and has now continued into being a hockey dad, which is awesome, too. So thanks and uh, congratulations again on everything. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me.